This month, a slew of presidential candidates showed up at an Iowa Pride Fest. One ran for the cause, another silent discoed. And in New York City, the Dem in the lead took a turn behind the bar at Stonewall. Hey, how are you? Good. Good to see you. For the only openly gay man in the race, Pride means merch and magazine covers. Candidates might see this community as a block of votes for the taking. Not surprisingly, that's not what we heard from a panel of LGBTQ Americans. Can I have everybody uh, go around and just tell me their names and how they identify? Um, and if you want to volunteer your pronouns as well, uh, that's great. Well, um, my name is Donnie, and I use he, him pronouns, and I identify as a transgender, uh, pansexual, or bisexual man. My name is Blair, I'm transgender, and I'm a Republican. My name is Caleb, I use he, she, and they pronouns, and I identify as a non-binary queer. I'm Raquel Willis, uh, pronouns she, her, hers. I identify as a black, queer, transgender woman. My name is Sarah Longwell, and I identify as a lesbian. My name is Jamie, I use they, them pronouns. I identify as a queer, non-binary, trans femme. Um, I also identify in the ace spectrum of asexuality. I'm Benji, I'm a guy, and I, um, I'm an American. Okay. My name is Paul. Uh, I identify as a gay American male. My name is Zachary Zane. I use he, him pronouns, and I identify as bisexual and queer. I'm Brandon Strock, and I'm a gay man. Uh, David Valbranch, he, him, his. I identify as a cis, same gender loving man. Hi, my name is Lucy. I'm a lesbian. I think that it is clear from the people who are here that uh, the LGBTQ community is not a voting monolith. Folks who are conservative and Republicans, if you could go around and tell me, who did you vote for in the last elections for president? I voted for Donald J. Trump. Okay. And I'm gonna do it again. Donald J. Trump, and he gets my vote again. All right. Hillary Clinton, never again. <laughs> Trump 2020. All right. And then I voted Trump, and now I'm planning on voting for him again. I did not vote for Trump, and I will not be voting for him again. So I think I may be the only conservative on the panel who is uh, not on the Trump train. Do you want to tell me why? Um, I don't think Trump is a conservative. I don't even think he's a Republican. And even though I can say, do I support tax cuts or judges or some of the, the policy areas where I think I would overlap with some of my other Republican friends, this is a values question for me, and Donald Trump does not reflect my values. Okay, Lucy? Mr. Trump, I won't vote for him again, though. Okay. I, I like what he's done. And I agree with a lot of his more financial decisions when it comes to our country, but his executive orders, they're not what we need. I don't believe the government should be so involved in our lives. How do you feel about Trump, the Trump administration when it comes to, to LGBTQ folks? Do you feel that his policies have either helped or harmed the LGBTQ community? I think Donald Trump is really changing the Republican Party by working with the gay and lesbian community. Um, he wasn't a racist or a homophobe until he ran for president. His um, best friend was Joan Rivers, who was like the patron saint of gays. If there was a homophobic drop of blood in him, we would have heard that 20 years ago. We did. Okay. All right. Caleb? I, I, I would push back and say he was a racist when Central Park Five happened. Nope. He's been a racist. Central Park Five happened. Actually, so I no. Actually, I just, nope. Nope. Actually, nope. I actually have here the op-ed that Trump put out about Central Park Five, there's nothing here mentioned about racism. If anything, he's talking about having a safe city for black and brown and white people. That's a narrative that keeps getting pushed and pushed and pushed, and we're gonna talk, and we gotta talk about some truth. This man, I did. did, I'm okay. pulling okay. up receipts. Okay. That's what you gotta do <laughs> nowadays. So well, there's, there's sorry, just people. going back to the original question, which is, has the Trump administration's policies helped or harmed the LGBTQ community? When the Trump administration, or perhaps just Trump, via Twitter, puts out a statement saying that um, we're, you know, no more trans people are allowed in the military, that's it, we're cutting you off and anybody in's gotta leave. Um, that affects the lives of transgender citizens of this country. It makes us appear less than to other people who uh, now can justify their bigotry and their transphobia because um, look at what the government does. Look at how the government treats transgender people or thinks of transgender people as being less than. If you're so less than that you can't even serve the country that you live in and go and fight and die so that we can continue to have these rights that everybody says that we should have and we should celebrate, then you know how, how worthy are you? You're not worthy.
I think the material reality of trans people has not improved under Trump at all, like full stop. And so I do think that the ways in which he moves in our government makes it more difficult, particularly for black and brown trans women to just live their lives, right? Because that violence is being stoked. Yeah, Sarah, exactly. I, I, I wanna know, as a trans woman, do you feel supported by the Trump administration? I feel supported as an American. Hmm. Um, I My life as a trans person hasn't been impacted positively or negatively as a result of Trump. I live my life and I'm just fine. All right, 2020. Obviously, President Trump is running again, uh, and there are about 50 billion Democrats running right now. Um, is anybody exciting you? You know, I'd be happy with anyone. Anyone. I'd be happy with anyone who isn't Trump. I'm saying that as a joke. Let me specify. Okay. Let me make sure that everybody knows that's a joke okay. before I get attacked. Danger. Um, Elizabeth Warren, if I had to vote right now, would have my vote. Um, Kamala Harris, uh, and you know, uh, Mayor Pete's adorable, but uh, I, he's he's not quite adorable. Adorable enough. Yeah, my front runner right now is Senator Elizabeth Warren as well. Um, I, I appreciate her um, her approach on student loan debt because I got it, um, but also like her calling out the issues that Black trans women, transgender women are facing right now, and not being afraid to to say their names really meant a lot to me. Um, so I'm watching her. I think Democrats are going to have to get over their uh, issues and their egos, and they're going to have to work together. And so I could see a combination of Elizabeth Warren and someone else. Um, or Joe Biden and someone, Stacey and, and, and Stacey Abrams, oh, or someone her. just, or someone just young, <laughs> someone just younger. Like it's exhausting. Like Barack Obama was 47 when he was voted into office. Like all these, and this is no, I'm not trying to be ageist or anything, but like when all the candidates are like in their 70s, I'm kind of like, how long are you going to be around? What's going to happen? And and seriously, like we need somebody with a little bit more youthful energy. Mayor Pete has been mentioned. Um, Mayor Pete is gay. He's been on the cover of magazines with his husband. Uh, does, does having somebody who's gay running right now, does that make you want to vote for him? It's great to have a gay candidate. It'd be great to have a lesbian candidate or a trans candidate. I'm looking at the policy. I could not care less. I mean, the <laughs> fact that he is gay, that, that doesn't mean he has my back as a trans person. It means nothing to me that he is a gay person because he's also cis and he's also white. I don't know why I'm not more excited about him than I am. There's something missing and it because there's nothing fresh. He's an Obama sequel. I'm surprised that everybody is so anti-Pete. I mean, I think I know a lot of sort of Pete curious conservatives uh, who who think he's <laughs> who think he's, is he's that like bi curious. Yeah, I mean it's, that it's, is the most oppressed group and, and, in this country. And one of the main reasons is is that I think you know I think he's very progressive, but he's tonally moderate. And I think even just listening to us, I mean, everybody's so angry all the time to have somebody who is somewhat aspirational um, and who is is trying to make a pitch for something something better and more, you know, something more uniting. Like, why is that so terrible? I think it's, I think it's nice. One of the reasons I walked away from the Democratic Party and liberalism is I am so fed up with identity politics. I am so fed up with political correctness. I am so fed up with all of, and everyone here has already said it, it's lack of policy, all identity. And that's what he is. I think having him out there and being visible is fantastic um, for, for the community. I, uh, I have a nephew, a 12 year old nephew who is a, a little gay boy. And for him to be able to see that there is a gay man who is running for president is fantastic. So it's that's a, meaningful to you? It's meaningful to have him there, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd rather have a beer with him than vote for him, because yeah. mm. he seems like you want to lean in and talk to him some more, you know? And his fabulous theater-loving husband, they sound great. But um, okay. I, I don't necessarily think that he's ready to run the country.